Welcome to We Can Geek, your new... Let me try this again. I said geek. Yeah, that, that's, that could we get ugly. Geek. Welcome welcome to We Can Geek, your new comics preview for April 4th. I'm Mike Ortiz. I'm Will Shulak. And I'm the Chris Brown. Welcome back, Will. Good to have you on the show. It's Special guest, Will. Good to be here. So I'd like to start this week off. We've been telling everybody, we've been hyping for a while now, the mm-hmm. Riley Rossmo contest. So we're going to, uh, before we get into our picks this week, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and draw those uh, draw those names. All right. I generally don't like to uh, pull anything because uh, I'm here all the time. People yell at me. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're going to have you pull it today here, Mike. All right. We're going to go ahead and, bam, we'll pull that out. Try if things good, and if you want to, make sure you cover up that little slot at the bottom there so we don't have tickets falling everywhere. Our first winner is... Mike Rizzo. Now, Mike Rizzo did not put an order of preference on there. He just wants one of the uh, sketches that is directly tied to Rebel Blood. So as we pull the other ones, we'll know uh, which one he's getting. All right. Go ahead and pull us another one here. Congrats, Mike Rizzo. Congratulations. Congrats. Uh, our next uh, winner here is Jeremy, uh, I don't know the last name, Bame, B-E-Y-M. Uh, and he, uh, his first choice was the raccoon. So uh, Jeremy uh, wins the raccoon. Congrats. All right. Shake it up there. Our next winner, we've got uh, Logan. Uh, Logan wanted the uh, Logan Dimitri, and he wanted the pheasant. So Logan wins the pheasant. Jeremy wins the raccoon. Mike Rizzo gets uh, the owl. And now this is to see who wins the uh, Hellboy. The Hellboy goes too. And the Hellboy sketch goes to, you can only win one piece of artwork. Let's try it again. (laughs) Logan bought a lot of stuff by (laughs) Riley. (laughs) He bought a lot. You got a raffle ticket for everything that you bought. That is uh, Jim. Jim... uh, didn't put a last name on there. He just put Jim, but we do have a, a phone number. So Jim wins the Hellboy, and we'll give Jim All a right, call. Jim. I'm trying to think who that was. It must have been uh, someone I knew that he yeah. just thought, I'm just writing Jim on here. Okay. But Congratulations. We got a few Congratulations, everybody. Enjoy Congratulations to all stuff, our winners. You're going to enjoy your uh, sketches a lot. Okay. So what do you got? Chris? All right. We've got uh, my first pick here is uh, Invincible number 90. Um, love this book. Mm-hmm. I, I did not get a chance to, to read anything uh, yet this morning. Um, I think this book is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got, uh, um, you know, the, the new character kind of taking over right now for Mark. We're going to see where this goes. Uh, some things are going on, and, and Mark is uh, Mark is in a coma. So yeah. let's, let's see what's, yeah, what's going on we've got a Invincible there. running around for a little while. Yes. Uh, an African-American Invincible. Just so, uh, you know, people don't really know that Mark's gone. Yeah. Uh, then we've got uh, Chew number 25, which I think is uh, has been a, a fantastic uh, mm-hmm. book here. Some really weird things going on and uh, a really strange image on the first page yeah. here of a busty old lady in uh, <laughs> some kind of a corset. Yeah, I pointed that out to you, Chris. Yes, yeah. yes you did. Like, oh, what the heck? They've been revealing more food-based superpowers and kind of uh, expanding... That yes. the, uh, the sympathaths can't don't just get the memories that uh, they can actually take on like the characteristics and abilities of the people that they well, yes face. they can so, uh, so there's some things going on there that yeah I'm sure this is this is getting somewhere we're probably about halfway through our story and they say they had about 50 issues planned yeah, something like that so, I'm not that far yet I'm only at issue 22 oh you're like three months behind yeah. you're getting there you're getting there. Then uh, this book is pretty cool. I, I just kind of like the idea of this, this uh, Age of Apocalypse, and it's written by Dave Lapham, mm-hmm. who he is a really diverse writer who's yeah. done some really strange things. Mostly known for crime fiction, but uh, he's right. been doing a lot of other stuff too. But he also, you know, I knew him when he was doing uh, stuff for, for Valiant back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. And he used to, to, like, wasn't he doing some uh, Harbinger and yeah. Eternal Warrior and stuff? And and then he started doing Stray Bullets, yep. which that's what everyone kind of got him, you know, known for. And then he was doing Crossed recently, which the oh. book just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. Whew. Uh, then we've got Animal Man, uh, number eight. 
also a, a great book. This this and Swamp Thing are two of my favorites uh, from the New Fifty Two, and they're they're right in their neck and neck. I mean, they 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 hang together as as a nice tandem because um, they're you know the whole red versus the green and everything they're doing there. Um, who do we got doing the art? Looks like someone different Steve here. Steve Pugh this time? The art is um, amazing on that. Travel Foreman did one through five, and then Steve Pugh does the right rest, and it looks good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing people were complaining about Travel Foreman, and even his stuff doesn't look as scratchy as it was. Maybe yeah. they got a, someone different well, to an ink sign. Foreman, uh, so they tightened the him up. Foreman is leaving the book. He's going to uh, Birds of Prey. Okay. And I don't know if Pugh is the new full-time artist or if they're going to bring somebody else on. And and I, I hate to say it, you know, for unfortunately for poor Travel Foreman, but I'm uh, guessing my sales are going to go up on that book because that was one thing that was holding people back from, mm-hmm. from reading it was that a lot of people didn't like his artwork on the yeah. title. Steve Pugh was actually the artist back when Jamie Delano was doing the book in Vertigo. Oh, okay. So he's uh, got quite a history with the character. Um, uh, then we've got next up is uh, Daredevil, number 10.1. Daredevil's been great. This is uh, going to be a jumping on point here. Uh, you know, we just got past the, the Mole Man story. So now this is going to be our little jumping on point. Start a new story arc, I guess. Artwork's amazing. Who is this guy? We got a, a, a new superhero looking guy. He kind of looks like uh, Incorruptible. I, I, I don't know. Or Okay. He kind of looks yeah, like those. We've got uh, Chris Somney coming on the book soon. So. Oh, cool. Wasn't he doing the backup stuff anyway? Well, it was... Uh... I thought the two of them, oh no, it, it was... was Mar- Marcos Martin and Paulo Rivera. Oh, and then Sammy's coming on. Okay. Sammy's going to be uh, doing some fill-in stuff. Yeah, so I know you like Chris Sammy. He's good? Yeah. He was doing uh, that, that Mighty Thor book with kind of the cartoon. Oh, you know, I really like that. Thor Mighty Avenger, he's yeah. done some fill-ins for... Yeah. Uh, he did uh, the Cap and Bucky. Okay. Oh, I stuff love that one. Spider-Man. I love Great that. artist. Uh, then we've got Fear Itself, The Fearless, number 12. Finally wrapping up this the story of Valkyrie and the pursuit of the hammers. I think this has been a cool book. And as I've said, the whole way along, I think it's much better than Fear Itself was. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that book, I thought, had some, some problems. This kind of gets more to, I don't know, feeling out the universe and, and, you know, how the hammers actually affected everybody. You know, it seems like it's taking place in its own corner and Marvel's moved on. But, you know, I, I still uh, think this has been a solid book. Uh, next up, I have uh, Anna Senti, number eight. I mean, Green Arrow, number eight. Um, <laughs> I don't get that, too. I don't read Green Arrow. I'm only reading this book because of the writer, Anna Senti. <laughs> um, I've never read Green Arrow. Uh, Anna Senti did a great, great run on Daredevil mm-hmm. back in the 90s. Um, I think the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, so I'm, I'm primarily just reading it to see what, what she does with the Green Arrow book. Now, I know people who are reading Green, green Arrow are not loving it and they're not even loving his his place in the new 52 mm-hmm. very much and so i have heard a, a few complaints but i'm checking it out because i've never been a green arrow fan and it's yeah. poss- impossible to offend me at this point because i don't it, know enough he's very much like uh the character from smallville at this point okay you know i i, tr- I checked out the first issue and it was basically smallville's green arrow okay uh, well, yeah he's just a little bit older he's got his money he's not the uh, crazy liberal green arrow yet Okay. So I have a feeling Anna Senti will we'll get him there. there. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Hell Yeah number two. Uh, Hell Yeah. I thought Hell Yeah number one was pretty good. It had, uh, you know, kind of a darker superhero mm-hmm. thing thing going. And um, I'm trying to remember what the hook was. Uh, I, I remember I enjoyed it. And I remember being shocked by the ending. I'm going to have to go back and, and reread it. Mm-hmm. I feel uh, it, it had uh, sort of a, a kick ass kind of vibe mm-hmm. to it. Um, but it's also trying to, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to do the. The superhero thing a little bit, yeah. but it also has that street level right. kick ass sort of vibe. Just a fun book. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, hell yeah, it makes me think of kick ass anyway. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's these, these uh, it's all of a sudden these titles are just declaratives. Mm. Like, oh, okay. When are we going to get Oh No? I, I'm <laughs> like, not sure. Stop, stop reading. Uh, then we've got. yeah related to Oh Yeah? Not as cool. No. Then, then we've got uh, Whispers number two. I liked this book about a, a kid with some troubles. You know, he's kind of still hanging in the group with, with his ex-girlfriend, even though he clearly did not win the friends she did, and he's just mm-hmm. sort of lingering on the property for now. Uh, but he's got this power where he can kind of zone out, and he can, you know, where he kind of dreams, and he can, he becomes a ghost sort of in his dreams, and he can see what other people are doing, and he can sort of whisper in their ear. And it's by Joshua Luna, one of the Luna brothers, who's done some some fun stuff. Lots of people yeah. say lots of good things about the sword and and what was it, uh, girls? girls and ultra. Okay, 
So yeah, really good, good good stuff. Um, that that is uh, the bulk of my stack there. What are you what are you looking at there? Will? Um, my uh, first book this week is Fanboys vs Zombies. Um, I didn't get a chance to read this, but the real pull for me was that it was only one dollar. And for a dollar, I can try something new. I like the art. For me, it's cartoony and fun and zombies. It's and fanboys. Yeah. yeah. Which is scarier? Yeah. I think fanboys. I would say the fan yeah, the fanboys are scarier. Because here's the thing. Like, in an apocalypse, which is going to stink more, the zombies or the fanboys? Yeah. Probably the fanboys. I've been in some conventions where it's scary in there. Well, the, the zombies just want to... Eat your brains, and the fanboys, they just want to complain no. about things on the internet. <laughs> Again, um, I don't know which is more detrimental yeah. to my mind. Well, I'd say try this. I mean, it's, it's only just, a buck at that yeah, price point. It, yeah. it, it just looks like a, it, it's a fun book. Cool. So far. Yeah. Um, then my next book this week is Danger Club. Basically, without saying anything, I'm going to read like all the summary they have here. Um, basically, um, the superheroes left the universe to fight something evil in space, and left are the sidekicks. And it's kind of them, what's happening with them. It's a little bloody for its teen rating, I'd say. I enjoyed it. I feel like it's getting, like, Hunger Games-esque. For all okay. you teenage girls out there, this might be your <laughs> comic. Don't make fun of the teenage girls. You just told me you were going to see it for a third time today. I was what? <laughs> no, are you going to pick up some teenage girls? I can get behind that. Yeah. Um, it, it, it sounds interesting. It's a little bloodier than I thought it would be, but I'm definitely going to read it. It's fun. Yeah. All right, cool. I've heard it described as like an Elseworlds Teen Titans. Yeah. All right. Um, and, and also, uh, I'm, I'm going to be picking that book up uh, for a totally different and completely random reason. Uh, way back in 1987... Uh, I actually penciled a book called Danger Club for a, a a comic book company called Third Planet Publications, which never saw print. They never actually. It was I was a dude working in a comic book store. He worked in another comic book store. Okay. We made a comic book. Nobody wanted it. it so uh, is it the same Twenty five years later, no, completely different. This has nothing to do with that. <laughs> twenty five years title. later, yeah. somebody else has uh, has has picked up the title. I'm sure for no reason. No one's ever. Oh, then that's a good title. Book. But, uh, yeah, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to pick this up because I tried to do this 25 years ago and nobody bought it. And it's an image number one. And it's an image number one, so that means it'll be worth a lot of money. Possibly. I don't think image disappoints a ton for me. I like it. I like it, too. Image does a lot of good books. They take risks that the the bigger companies don't have to take and don't don't feel like taking. And it's all creator-owned stuff. Yeah. That's the bulk of my stack. Uh, well, I'm going to start off with Red Lanterns. Uh, this is uh, still going pretty good. Uh, Peter Milligan uh, is doing a good job with this book. Uh, we've got a, a rebellion in the Red Lantern ranks uh, that, uh, that Gleese is leading against Atrocitus. She feels he has lost his way since he has lost his rage. They've uh, come up with a somewhat contrived way for the Red Lanterns who originally had no mind and could not speak. Well, now they can talk, and now they can think on their own because a book with a whole bunch of characters who can't think or talk uh, is not going to last very long. But uh, Milligan's doing a good job. Uh, we ha- we've got the Earth Red Lantern who's finally popped up. Oh, Guy cool. Gardner was in the last issue. Um, but, yeah, this has uh, been pretty solid, a, a kind of a darker take. Next up, we've got Swamp Thing, which uh, Chris already mentioned before. Uh, this is the Scott Snyder book. Great book. Um, I, I've got two problems with this book. Problem number one, as we see on the cover, no. you know, can at least Swamp Thing not have armor? Does everybody in the DC Universe either have armor or fishnets? Or, uh, <laughs> actually, I prefer well, fishnets. Rob and, Liefeld's taken over like three more books, so, so you're lucky he doesn't more, have belt buckles. Armor. So yeah, we've got Swamp Shoulder Thing, a little armored. He's got, uh, he's got branches on his head that look like horns. And, uh, and and wings. The turn them into sweet tooth. And, uh, yeah. and, and you know, I... He's swamp tooth. I get that they want to kind of revamp the look of everybody and, and get this kind of consistent thing. I don't know if that was necessary, the swamp thing. I think he looked fine before. I think he actually looks a little silly with these branch horns. Um, and secondly, even though this has been a, a, a incredibly well done book, we're at issue eight, and they still haven't actually finished the story. Right. Yet. Yeah. Um, Alan Moore's famous Swamp Thing run, you know, legendary run, was only like a little over 40 issues. And we've already got like 20% of that and they haven't finished the first story yet. 
So uh, speed it up a little bit, guys. I don't, I don't got time for this. So but that is a patient writer. In any event, it, it is still a really incredibly well done book. Uh, Yannick Paquette uh, and Marco Rudy on the artwork. Some some wild page layout. Sometimes it gets a little confusing, but for the most part, sure. you can figure it out. So yeah, for me, I'm just gonna you know I, I can handle Superman losing his red underwear, but I don't want my Swamp Thing to have horns. <laughs> Come on, Four guys. Fish no, he wants the fish fish nuts. Nuts. <laughs> Speaking of Superman's red underwear, we've got Action Comics number eight. Uh, again, now they're f finally finishing their story. They had a little two-issue break. Yep. Superman finally takes on Brainiac. This is basically his big debut. He got his costume in the last issue. Uh, this I don't know if the book's jumping ahead to the present after this, uh, but yeah, this is finishing up really you know Superman's big public push. He had been around for a while. Uh, and now uh, Brainiac steals Metropolis and Superman gets it back. So, yeah, this is the end of uh, Grant Morrison's initial storyline. Okay. Uh, good stuff. This is probably still my favorite. Well, I like action this, better than Superman. This, oh, much better. This is this is kind of tied with Batman as my favorite. Okay. Uh, favorite of the New 52 books. Next up, we got Amazing Spider-Man continuing the ends of the Earth. Uh, last time out. Uh, is he the, dressed up like Jason Todd? Uh, no, he's got armor. some spider armor. <laughs> that's a that's a red hood costume. Uh, he's got no, he's got a spider on the chest. Oh, oh. Uh, and basically, uh, Doctor Octopus is making his play. Uh, he's dying. He has come up with a way to uh, end and reverse uh, global warming, and he's offering uh -huh. it to the world. Spider Man knows that this is all a trick. Everybody's going, oh, maybe he's 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 turned over a new leaf. He wants to be remembered. Spider-Man's smart, too smart for that. He knows Dr. Octopus tried to marry uh, Aunt May way back in the day. He knows that, that, that Ock's a bad dude. And we know he's a bad dude, too, because for the last few months he we've seen a, him. He paid a woman to dress up like Aunt May <laughs> and pretend she was dying. Crazy stuff. And professed saw that she knew all along to pee. Was that him or was that... Uh, that Doc Ock was behind that, I think. That's Either way. That cool. But we we yeah, know. We've seen for the last couple of months that he is also assembling five sinister other spider foes so we know that uh, Doc Ock, he tried to sabotage the uh, that space station. So we know that he's up to no good. Spidey knows he's up to no good. Octavius is up to uh, no good. And uh, Spider-Man has, has used his, the vast technologies at his new job to create a suit of armor that can counter Dr. Octopus, Mysterio, the Rhino, Sandman, and all the people he's going to be fighting soon. Uh, next up, Wolverine and the X-Men. Uh, this is an interesting cover here. We've got Wolverine in Professor X's chair because he's... The new headmaster of the school. Sure. Uh, this is starting a new storyline. We've got Chris Bacello back. It looks like we've got Sabretooth back. How did Sabretooth come back after the head getting lapped off? They explained how in Wolverine somewhere, but I didn't read it. <laughs> and it's it's comic books. Yeah, so. but he got his head chopped off. Uh, it regenerates. It was the only sword that could kill him. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this, is the, maybe this is the saber tooth from the other dimension where they got Nightcrawler. I'd buy that. Maybe. Either way, uh, this has been a, a really fun book. That last storyline was a blast with uh, Kitty Pride versus the Brood and Wolverine gambling in space. Uh, so yeah, it's it's crazy stuff. This is this is really a fun X Men book. So uh, it's it's actually my favorite of the X Tiles right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up, Ultimate Spider Man. Uh, we found out that uh, that. That his uncle, who is the ultimate prowler, now knows that Miles is Spider-Man. Uh, this is the prowler here on the front. Um, this again, this has been a good book. Uh, they they revealed the new Scorpion that has nothing to do with the other, with the Marvel Scorpion, the Six One Six Scorpion. Uh, I, I really like that this is in in the spirit of Spider-Man, but just vastly different and so much much more different than it was before because mm -hmm. now it's not even Peter. Next up, Glamour Puss. This is a strange book. Uh, I finally did get caught up with this book. The first half deals with uh, this new character, Zutanapus, which is kind of a slightly, uh, a very curvy Zatanna. Okay. In the last issue, uh, this curvy big booty Zatanna ran around making fun of skinny fashion models for half the book. Um, and then the rest of the book is continuing uh, the examination of uh, the the last day of, of Alex Raymond's life, uh, Alex Raymond and Stan Drake, who got in a car accident. He spent about six months, wow. six issues, talking about this. Uh, there's always been some question as to whether it was an accident or a suicide. Um, so it, it's some, some wild stuff. He's putting in whatever comes to mind. Last issue had uh, basically two pages talking about 
the 1956 Corvette that they were driving in and how well it performed versus a BMW of the time. Whatever comes into Dave Sims' head goes into this book. And I love yeah. it because it's, you know, it's self-indulgent but not in a bad way. It's just like, you know, I think I want to write about the, the 1956 Corvette for two pages. And you know what? He can. It's his book. Ultimate creator own book. He doesn't even care if the readers want to read it. Who was publishing uh, this? Uh, this is Aardvark Vanaheim. That's uh, Dave Sims' own uh, company. Next up, Casanova. Uh, this is uh, the third issue of the, the new stuff. The, uh, the Mar Icon had reprinted uh, all of the stuff that Image had done. I really love this book. Uh, you know, Matt Fraction may get a lot of crap for, for what he writes in the mainstream. This is this is what he does best. I mean, this yeah. is like Grant Morrison. You know, you can complain about uh, action comics. You can complain about the stuff he does on Batman. None of it touches the Invisibles. None of it touches his creator own stuff. And this is really what Matt Fraction was, was born to write. The stuff he's doing on Thor and Fear Itself, that just pays the bill so he can do this stuff. Because it's, it's crazy stuff. It's, you know, it's great, too. It's, yeah, it's Gabriel, Gabriel Ma, Ma and uh, Fabio I Moon uh, is returning in the next story arc. Uh, Casanova Quinn is traveling through the multiverse and uh, destroying dimensions so that uh, the, the villain character never actually becomes this grand villain that's going to wind up destroying the multiverse. It's crazy stuff. It's wild right. out there stuff. Uh, it's hard to describe, but uh, if if you like this kind of stuff, if you if you love <coughs> if you love weird Grant Morrison stuff, you'll love weird Matt Fraction stuff. Next up, another icon book, uh, Bendis and Bagley's Brilliant. Uh, I read the first two issues of this. I'm still not really sure where it's going. I know Bendis right. likes the slow burn, but uh, if this issue doesn't pick up a little bit, uh, it may just get bumped because it's it's solid. It's well done. Um, I, I love what they did on Scarlet, but uh, for some reason this just isn't clicking yet, and okay. it just it, it feels like a TV show pitch just a little too much. So that's uh, that's the bulk of my stack. All right, is that'll bring me to the top of my stack here, which is uh, Fatale issue number four. This is Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips. Uh, this is an image book. Great warish creepy monster thing. There's like kind of a Cthulhu mm. guy in here. Um, but it's got this noirish detective kind yeah. of thing, but a little bit of a superhero mob thing. It's mixing genres so well, but it's yeah. perfect. And I really, really dig this book. It's Lovecraft meets uh, Dashiell Hammett. Yes, very much so. And I'm, I'm loving it. Um, I might even throw a little Raymond Chandler in there because yeah. Raymond Chandler thought a lot of himself as a writer and our main character is a writer. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the, the mystery stuff is very Hammett. The heavy-handed writer stuff, I think, is, is very Chandler. But great, great stuff. I can't say enough about it. And Sean Phillips' artwork's incredible. Yeah, I love that cover. Yeah, I like what they've been doing with the covers. Covers have been looking pretty cool. Yeah. So that is, uh, that is my stack. What, is, what do you got there, Will? My top pick is Avengers vs. X-Men. We've been waiting for this. Round one. I even showered this morning and put on new underwear for this book. <laughs> uh, I wanted. Your to mom says always make sure you got on clean underwear, and especially you know, if you're going to meet the X Men and/or really the Avengers. We really appreciate that too. Um, I read it. I like it. It was pretty cool. I'm gonna read it. I really like um I like Bendis as an uh, writer and I uh, uh, Romita was one of the people who got Romita Jr. was one of the people who got me into comics and I had to try it out. I don't for sure know what's going on, but it's like with the Phoenix is coming. That that's the big thing. It seems like if yeah. you were reading the X Men, you have a better idea of what's mm -hmm. already happening than if you were just reading Avengers. I was not reading X Men. Um, and it seems like we're being dropped in the middle of an X-Men story, and then the Avengers have to handle this yeah. situation. That's fine by me. I don't need to know everything the, that's the going Phoenix on. The Phoenix thing uh, started in that uh, point one book Okay, they did months back. So they have, they've they been touching on hope in the X-Men. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and she's, you know, a, a redhead with green eyes, so obviously she has a connection to Jean Grey. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, She's wearing Phoenix, green and yellow costume. Yeah, the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix is coming for her, and... Uh, the X Men uh, think that's a good thing. The Avengers think that's a bad thing, and yes. uh, and they fight. Um, yeah, it, it's really cool art. I well, I just the, the Romina art's book. great, but it's also inked by someone else, so it looks a little softer than his yeah. uh, lines usually yeah. look. But it still has the dynamic of Scott Hanna. 
Okay. It? Yeah, it's it's good. I, I thought it was a good solid book, and that uh, is going to be available tonight, starting at eight o'clock. Yeah. Retailers are allowed to sell it, so come on into Comics and More. We will have it here starting at eight p.m. tonight. Eight to twelve. I'll be here from 8 to 12. And uh, can I say this real quick? One other thing that, that is going on with this. First of all, this is another one of those ones with a free digital copy. Yep. So that uh, if you uh, if you buy the print copy, you'll get the free one for your phone or your iPad. And in addition, this has got the uh, augmented reality. Marvel is debuting that here. Uh, if you've got a smartphone or an iPad, uh, anytime you see this little AR symbol, you just hold it up to the camera, and it brings up... Uh, like uh, some of the pages, it'll show you the original pencils and it fades to the inks and fades to the colors. You get some behind the scenes information. Uh, it starts with the cover. I played around with it a little bit. It's really, really cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's kind of raw. This is the first time they've, they've done this. Yeah. But uh, really a nice way to give some bonus features to, uh, to the fans and, any, and the app is free. And also just again, just showing Marvel is, is still very committed nice to print. The, uh, you can only get these AR codes apparently in the print edition. So if you oh, gotcha. buy the digital version, you're you not going to get, get the bonus features. You can only get it from the print edition and you get the free digital copy. So uh, Marvel is really trying to uh, to make yeah. sure that, that people are coming into the stores and, and checking stuff out yeah. and uh, and doing some really interesting, clever stuff with the technology. It, it, it was a good book. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Me too. If you like superheroes fighting, and who doesn't? Uh, my top pick is uh, the book that everyone did not know that they've been waiting for. <laughs> it's Supreme, number 63. You want to talk about a delay. Yeah, right. They got they, they got nothing on uh, Straczynski, and, uh, and even Kevin Smith can't beat this delay. You know what? Uh, perfect timing, too, though, with the whole Alan Moore thing. Oh, yeah. This is you know, before Watchmen. This is after Supreme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but years ago, uh, Rob Liefeld created Supreme uh, when Image Comics started off. It was a Superman knockoff. Yep. Not a very good book. Then Alan Moore takes it over, brings in this kind of Silver Age retro feel, completely reboots the character. Fantastic stuff. Art by Rick Veitch and uh, Chris Sprouse, among yep. others. Uh, it starts off at Image Comics, jumps to Maximum Press, goes to Awesome Comics, and then Awesome Comics goes under with one script unmade. Alan Moore's yep. script for this book has been sitting around for, what, 10 years now? At least. Years. So uh, as part of the Extreme Studios relaunch, because we've already gotten Profit. And Glory. We've already gotten Glory. I know Blood Strike's coming. Blood, Young Blood's Blood coming. Blood Strike came last week. Okay. Uh, they, they resurrected that final script. Eric Larson uh, illustrated it. Uh, he's got a different inker on here. Uh, so it's it's actually a little bit different. It actually looks a little bit more. They got they're channeling a little bit of Rob Liefeld in here too. A little a lot more lines and cross hatching. Okay. This is the end of Alan Moore's storyline. Uh, after that, uh, Eric Larson's going to take over as the writer. But yeah, I mean here we go. A brand new old Alan Moore story in a, in mainstream comics, and he's probably not very happy about it. <laughs> so. Uh, if you want to make Alan Moore mad, he got paid for it. He already got paid. I mean, uh, I, he probably doesn't care at this yeah. point, but I think it is interesting timing with everything that else has gone on. And that, well, you were work for hire. Here's an exact example of work for hire. Yeah. So someone puts out a script he wrote. Right. Rather, And what I appreciate with, uh, in, I was reading an, art, an interview with Eric Larson from uh, Emerald City Comic Con over the weekend, and he said the plan always was to take it in a different direction because yeah. Alan Moore came in, did his own thing. Now they were going to take it in a different direction. There's a cliffhanger, and then you find out how to work it in the other way. And that was what they'd always planned. Right. And I, I think that's almost more respectful to Alan Moore with everything he's been complaining about. Oh, this is, yeah. I mean, I don't think Alan Moore... And I don't even think they're this. trying to respect him. They're just like, well, there's not much we can do with what he did, and that's not what we well, wanted to do. Yeah. I so mean, then they he, come back out of it and do something different. He, he got to finish the story that he had always yep. planned. He had always planned for someone else to continue this because this isn't his character. Rob Liefeld created it. There were some... And just great timing with him being in the... Yeah, so, the news uh, the way it is right now. But I, I, I did not, I didn't know that this, this. I, I remember I loved this run. I don't remember how it ended, so I don't remember that it didn't actually end properly. Uh, but you know, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing how this all wraps up. And uh, I, of course, I don't remember you know, anything that happened before. Hopefully, Image. I know Checker did a, a reprint of all of the Alan Moore stuff a few years back. Maybe okay. Image can get a hold of that and, and put the whole thing together in one volume because a lot of people never, a lot of people have probably haven't read the old right. stuff. A lot of people haven't read the Checker edition. I think they're out of print. But uh, hey, it's new Alan Moore, even if it's old Alan Moore, so I'm in. Is it a jumping on point? Probably not a great jumping on point. <laughs> right. Uh, but so what? 
Yeah, anyway. I mean, you could read the end anyway. You know, might you as know. well. We've waited for a long time for this. And actually, I mean, it, I, I like Eric Larson's art uh, quite a bit, but I, I really think this anchor gives it a kind of polish that... Uh, you yeah, it looks interesting in there. So, good stuff. If you like Alan Moore and you don't realize you've been waiting 15 years or 10 <laughs> years or however long it's been, check it out. Good things come to those who wait or something yeah. like that. But come on back tonight, 8 o'clock, uh, 8 to midnight, we'll be selling Avengers number <laughs> Avengers vs. X-Men number one. Variant Word. covers. Word. We'll have variant covers. We'll have all kinds of stuff. So, come on in, 8 to midnight. And with that, that is My money's week. on the Avengers. They got a movie. Yeah, go Avengers. We're an Avengers star. This is an Avengers yeah. star. So, the X-Men better watch out. Yeah. But with that, that is your Week in Geek.